Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net, and let's talk about Kevin Spacey again. I've talked about him a couple times in the past and have pretty much expressed that I have mixed feelings about him. He is one of my favorite actors, I'm not gonna lie, but if what he said is true, and again, I always wait until there's like, you know, evidence and a trial and things like that before I actually cross that bridge, then yeah, he is a very despicable human being and he deserves to be locked up for some of the things he did. Doesn't mean his movies aren't good, it doesn't mean the talent isn't there, it just means, well, it means what it's always meant. Talented people sometimes are really crummy human beings as well. This has just kind of been the case for a long time. And, you know, when he came out um, with that apology that was, that some took as a roundabout confession that he did what he did, and at the very worst, you know, try to get brownie points with the LGBT community uh, to protect him from accusations. You know, the, the backlash was swift, and you saw things getting canceled, and you saw him being scrubbed from things, which I had some issues with. I don't like the idea that Netflix canceled the, or at the very least shelved, the completely finished, otherwise, gore movie. I did not like that he was scrubbed from all the money in the world. I considered that to be censorship. So my viewers feel differently. Hey, that's fine. You know what? It's a very sensitive topic. But I was interested in seeing Billion Dollar Boys Club. I believe that. Yeah, Billionaire's Boys Club. That's what it was called. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it seemed like a pretty good movie. And secondly, um, the studios decided not to replace Kevin Spacey. I think that might have had something to do with the fact that they just couldn't afford to do it. So... You know, onward you go. It was filmed two years ago, so what are you going to do? But also, considering Spacey's current career, that we really haven't heard from him since the allegations arose. We didn't, we don't know what he's doing, and for all intents and purposes, his career is pretty much over at the time being. He might as well be dead. It's kind of like seeing the final performance of an actor. And as a film critic, yeah, you want to watch that and you kind of want to see, well, if this is going to be the last one, how would you summarize, like, his career at that point? You know, is that a strong note to go out on? Is, you know, it an ironic note to go out on? Um, I hear he was playing, like, a gay mobster who took advantage of teenage boys. That's a very interesting final role, if it is indeed his final role. And I wanted to see it. And I liked seeing it in theaters. Now, I was fully aware that it had been released on demand, like on iTunes, like in July. But you know what? I was like, you know, screw it. I'm going to wait for the theater because I like seeing things in the theaters. Plus, with AMC, Movie Pass, and Cinemia, you know, one of them should be able to cover it. And uh, it turns out I uh, might not really get that chance because um, the movie did come out in theaters, but really that seems more like a token gesture because it was only in 10 theaters nationwide. And it wasn't even in any of the major ones like the Arclight or the Times Square Theater. It was just in 10 random theaters. So according to The Wrap, Billionaire Boys Club, a fact-based thriller whose theatrical release was thrown into doubt after the sexual misconduct allegations against star Kevin Spacey last fall, opened on Friday, but on just 10 screens nationwide. The film, whose cast includes rising stars like Anzel Elgort, Taron Edgerton, Billy Lord, and Emma Roberts, is mostly skipping major markets for places like Salon, Ohio, Chalmette, El, Louisiana, and Pompano Beach, Florida. You can see it tonight in Brooklyn at Coney Island's Kent Theater at 10 p.m. If you live in Southern California like I do, you missed your shot. It already played its lone Friday showing at Riverside's Galaxy Mission Grove 18 at 9.30 a.m., according to Fandango. And by the way, that movie theater, I looked it up, it's like an hour and 48 minutes away from me. I wasn't that interested in it. So I personally think this is a shame. Again, it's we we're talking about Kevin Spacey's potential final movie, it sounded like a good movie. Maybe it's not. The reviews have definitely been very mixed on it. But I, I did want to see it in theaters. And, you know, to have it in one Southern California theater, which, by the way, like, I, I'm not in the L.A., L.A. area, but I am close enough that if I want to see something, I'm pretty much just a drive away from it. And 
it's you can find anything here. It's crazy. It's very helpful for a film critic and historian like me. And yet the fact that almost two hours, that's what I'd have to drive to go to this place. And I don't even know where this is. I think this is in the middle of nowhere. And a 930 showing, I pretty much have to either get up at 6 a.m. to go to this place or I have to spend the night and, you know, n neither are... I didn't even know that there were theaters out there that were still showing movies at 9.30 in the morning. But I guess I've got a week to figure out if I want to do that. It's going to be playing all week there at 9.30 in the morning. But at the same time, I'm thinking what's happening is like, I think the studios, they put it out there like, hey, we're going to be putting out in theaters and they at pretty much ask theaters, what do you think? And I don't think any theater really wanted to touch it because you know what? When the news came out that this movie was coming out, a lot of articles said that Kevin Spacey was trying to mount a comeback attempt, that the studio should be ashamed for even attempting to release it, which, you know, first of all, no, he wasn't attempting a comeback. The movie was filmed long before the allegations. He hasn't been working. No one's asked to work with him recently except for Bernardo Bertolucci, and we don't even know if he's actually going to do it. So this was not a comeback attempt. This was something that was in the can that was already finished. And I'm actually kind of a little offended that people would even go to the studios and say, hey, you know what, why would you even release it? You know, why would you even entertain that thought? And it's for the same reasons I don't like the idea that they shelved gore. It's like, more than just Kevin Spacey's in it. You have all these upcoming stars. You had people who worked years on it. You had all these millions and millions of dollars spent on it. You really just want to throw it all away because of one guy. And... These people are hired to pretend anyway. They're not even acting like themselves, although a gay mobster, maybe that describes Kevin Spacey. I don't know. It was just really silly. But all the articles started pointing out these things. And so no theater was going to touch or very few theaters were going to touch it. Apparently, we know how many theaters were willing to touch it. Ten. And we know at least one theater is showing it at 930 in the morning, which means it's almost guaranteed no one's going to go to see it. Now, what's especially fascinating about this situation is kind of how history repeats itself in yet in different ways. Because for those of you who might not recall, Kevin Spacey was part of a movie called Margin Call, where he was definitely one of the main characters. And Margin Call's big claim to fame was that very few theaters wanted to carry it because it was going to be a day and date release. It was one of the first true day and date releases. It was like, it, hey, theaters... DVD, streaming, digital download. It's going to be available on everything on day one. And a lot of theaters didn't want to carry it because who wants to carry a movie that's going to have a day and day release? That kind of encourages people not to go to the theaters. Thankfully, because of where I live, I was able to go see it in theaters, which was about 10 minutes from my house in Costa Mesa. <laughs> really, you can find anything where I live, which is why this is so surprising. And I went to see it in theaters, loved it quite a bit. I remember a couple weeks later going to Sacramento. I recommended to my parents. They looked in theaters. It wasn't in theaters. We um, we rented it on Amazon. Not proud about that fact either, but we did. And that was considered a huge success. It was critically acclaimed. It even got an Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay, I believe. And that was a huge hit, and Kevin Spacey was part of it. He was part of that experiment that showed to be, you could do this, and you could do it successfully. Now, essentially, he is part of a day and date release that has largely failed, or maybe another type of experiment, because the movie was released on streaming first, and then it was released in theaters like almost a month later. And clearly, no one wants to carry it. So it's kind of funny how Spacey has been part of two very big experiments on whether or not people will go to see something if it was not made available on, you know, streaming and DVD first. I don't think this has been made available on DVD. I don't know if it's going to be made available on DVD, but it's at least made available on streaming. And maybe you could say the experiment was also like, well, theaters want to carry a movie with a, you know, known, because we haven't gone to trial yet, but a known sexual predator. Um... And the answer for that is probably no, although interestingly, I was talking to a friend of mine who owns a local theater here, asked him if he was going to carry the movie, and he said, 
No, because you know what? People would rally against us. They would protest us. I, I can't be taking that kind of chance. And I don't think anyone really wants to see it anyway. Interestingly enough, his uh, classic film night the fo- in two weeks will be showing Chinatown. So, I don't know what to say about, about that. Um, Frank, you know I love you, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, interestingly, also for classic film night, they're also showing Ghost Dad in a few weeks, which is weird because, you know, Bill Cosby... Definitely, I was accused of a lot more than Spacey. And unlike Chinatown, I don't think anyone actually likes Ghost Dad. I don't know why you're doing that myself, but uh, whatever. Anyway, I'm curious. Do any of you live near one of these 10 theaters that have Billionaire Boys Club? If so, do you plan to see it? If not, why not? I can take a guess, but I'd still love to know. And yeah, what do you think of this whole release thing overall? Um, Do you think this is the last Kevin Spacey move we'll see? Are you happy about that? Are you sad about that? I would love to know. So comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.